Hello. Okay, let's start with my uh, beautiful head. Where does his head come from? Let's start with that. It's this uh, beautiful head. That is this uh, yellow. And sorry, from which country? Peru. Peru? No, no, not. Uh, it's. Uh, I can. Uh, where do you think? Which country? Not Luxembourg, but. <laughs> I, uh, sorry. France. France. No, further away. New Zealand, no, also not. <laughs> Thailand. Thailand, nearby. Uh, Sorry? The, uh, ah, well, this is uh, warmer. Is it getting warmer? Yes. It's a cold country. It's getting warmer, but it's cold country. <laughs> Sorry? Oh no 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 this in high in the in the Himalayas. Yeah, next to Nepal. Tibet, yes, Tibet, so there it comes from. Where so I uh you should recognize why I start with this. I started to talk with okay, let's say I'm going to start with uh, explaining what our micro front ends and what was a front end monolith I start with and I step over to <laughs> micro front ends and an example app, and I uh, show you how you communicate within uh, an application which is made with micro front ends. So uh, I started with this uh, talk because I cycled 20 years ago from, uh, let's draw the line, uh, from uh, Holland to, uh, to Nepal, Tibet, I cycled, and that was an eight month uh, bike trip. And I, then I, uh, yeah, you see myself here cycling in the mountains. And I uh, stepped off my bike and I uh, visited the park with some friends, which I met also on the bike. And we uh, made a walk through the, the Bardia Park. It's a little park in, uh, on, on the border uh, Nepal, Tibet. And uh, we have also a guide with us. Uh, he has a stick with him. And uh, it's about microphone and so <laughs> patience. He's a stick with him and he has no gun. But it is quite uh, dangerous there. So uh, we, I saw, I was walking there, I saw a silhouette of a rhino. So uh, the guy that was uh, looking at it, I can't look there. My God, the rhino, she has a little one with her. And that is very dangerous because she, uh, she, uh, she wants to protect her, her little one. And she's also a monolith, eh? you say. Eh? We've also, uh, we also start with application in the hand, uh, which, uh, which are a monolith. And uh, I'm going to break it up into microfronts later on. So that's why I start with a monolith. And what does she do? She, I was, yeah, she was running, eh? you see it. But why? I was, uh, I was climbing up in the tree because uh, the, the guide says, oh my God, it is very dangerous. She's looking to us. And I was standing there on a branch on a separate tree, and the guide was yelling, "Oh, great! You are you're uh, you're very lucky that you." Uh, and I got silence. Oh my God! And then the, the rhino was uh, staring his ears like raiders, and he was running very fast towards my tree. Why? I, I was not making the noise, and he was standing under my branch. Huh? As high, my branch was as high as the nose, as the horn of the rhino. So he was running here. And how fast can a rhino run, do you think? Is it A, 25 kilometers an hour? You think that? 40? Nobody? The maximum, yeah, 50 kilometers an hour. It's unbelievable fast. Yeah, when you see this, is this. Uh, huh? I was shivering on the on the branch, of course. <laughs> here I'm standing on the tree. It is not so. I wish it was not so cute as you see here. Eh? It was a very dangerous situation, and I was standing there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm Peter Eigenmans from Holland, and I uh, work for uh, Ordina, uh, yeah, which is uh, specialized in uh, also front and back end. And I work for the uh, James Root, which is uh, which is the department of uh, Ordina. 
uh, which is 100% uh, specialized in front end. I am also international speaker and uh, yeah, and also uh, yeah, front end programmer. <coughs> now, so uh, we start with the monolith. This is the, the Rhino, and this is what we uh, sometimes we, uh, we can start with this kind of application. And everything is tightly coupled together, so we we don't want this, of course. But the application one big ball of mud, they say. So we split up our application into layers in this way later on. But this is also not what we want, because when you change something in one layer, you have to change al also something else in another layer. So you have a big uh, ripple effect, they say. So we split up our back end. Uh, you know the story, of course, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, microservices, our verticals. But we still have the monolith in the front end. Eh? Still have the front end monolith, the Rhino in the front end. So we uh, the <laughs> we we want to split it up. Our front end, uh, split it up like our back end, of course, in slices. So the micro front ends are born. Eh? So uh, yeah, the definition is of course that we want to accept the uh, extend the uh, con concepts of the uh, microservices. I think my phone is going. <laughs> Wait a moment. Okay, so we uh, split up our application into verticals, and uh, every vertical is uh, is um, yeah, focused on one business domain, and every uh, micro front end on vertical is consists of front end and back end. Some so everybody thinks this is about front end only, but it's also about back end, and every team is focused on one business domain is uh, working independently of each other at their own pipeline to to uh, for, for the application and uh, they are uh, okay they can choose their own framework for the front end and they can choose their own frameworks for the back end and the back end has their own databases and all those micro front ends all of those verticals communicate with each other uh, via uh, events that's the best way i show you some little sample Uh, why micro front ends? Uh, yeah, incremental upgrades, eh? so they are small, so you can uh, incrementally uh, very fast, you can deliver very fast your, your, uh, your features. And uh, every micro front end has, uh, has its own pipeline to deploy, uh, test, and uh, release, of course, to be independent. And uh, simple code bases, eh? this, uh, it is simpler to understand than, uh, than a monolith. And technocratic, for I say, uh, you can choose your own framework, and uh, the teams are working uh, independently of each other. So I made a little uh, a micro front end app uh, for this uh, talk. Uh, yeah, here you can see uh, outdoor, you can choose your outdoor event, you can book an event, and this uh, micro front end app, con this <coughs> view consists of two micro front ends. You can say. Uh, you can say a little, uh, eh, it, it contains a container which is responsible for uh, authentication, authorization, and also routing. And uh, it consists of the search event eh, for searching, yeah, the searching block here, and also for the outdoor events list itself. It's also a micro front end. When you click on a, uh, on a uh, when you want to book an event, you have, uh, of course, this slide this uh, view and this uh, micro front end consists only about is only have uh, this micro front in it as uh, the book event in it uh, micro front end when you want to start with micro front ends, you have to uh, define how you want to split your micro front end do you want to split it horizontally or, for, or vertical, vertically uh, horizontally means uh, that uh, multiple teams are responsible for one a few one a vertical and uh, <coughs> a vertical uh, split means that one team is responsible for one vertical. That is more a, in the line of my talk now. And uh, you can work then independently, better independently of each other. Uh, a micro front end is not the same as a, a component. Uh, a micro front end is more an architectural uh, concept. And a component is nothing more than uh, you can show something UI component. A micro front end can consist of multiple components. It's more, it's, it's an app on its own, eh? and it is uh, running remotely. You can say you can also run it uh, locally, of course. 
so uh, we uh, when, when we want to uh, integrate our when you want to integrate our uh, micro frontends together, so we have one single user facing application at the end. We want to bundle it, of course, eh? all those separate micro frontends. We can bundle our micro frontends at build time, at server side, or our, at the runtime. Here you see an example how we do that. We have uh, build, build time integration where each uh, micro frontend is a NPM package on its own. And we publish this. MBM packages, and we can uh, yeah, uh, bundle it together via a package JSON. So uh, we do it uh, in a simple way with build time integration. When you have server side integration, you uh, bundle your application at server side out of multiple templates. And at the runtime, you bundle application in the front end. So I show you an example about it. I'm this, focus, this, uh, this talk is more focused on runtime integration. Uh, build them integration, you see here in uh, uh, the same picture uh, where they say uh, every micro frontend is, uh, built like a M is published like an NPM package and is uh, bundled together via a package JSON. And we can also use a mono repo for it, uh, one, also one repo for your micro frontend. And uh, okay, uh, <coughs> you can easily then share code if one in one mono repo, one uh, uh, same styling and same formatting, that is quite easy. Here you see an example how we uh, bundle it in our uh, package JSON. It's a very simple, simple example. Eh? The, the name of the package is, uh, is the container itself. And here you see the dependencies. Those are the uh, huh? NPM packages. Those are the micro frontends. Uh, drawback of build -up integration, yeah, in, uh, in comparison with Monorepo, eh? you have to release every single micro frontend in a Monorepo in order to release a change. So, uh, it's good to split up your application into separate parts, but it is very time consuming to, uh, to make a release in this way. So uh, built-in integration is not always uh, good. Here you see I'm standing still in my, uh, <laughs> on the branch, and uh, I was, uh, the evening before, I was reading a book, How Should I Survive a Rhino? So it was not a coincidence, I thought. <laughs> So I could uh, run a zigzag away, of course, if, uh, the, because the rhino is, uh, is not, uh, cannot see very well. So uh, you can do that. You can also lay in the, in the grass, or uh, some long grass, and uh, you can also sniff at you. And uh, yeah, you, have, you, <laughs> you can si survive it a little bit, a uh, little chance you have. And uh, yeah, what shall I do? Server-side integration. Uh, this is uh, at server side, you uh, bundle the application out of multiple templates. And I want to step over to runtime integration because my talk is about this, uh, uh, this bundle technique to bundle your micro front ends at the end. I bundle it here uh, at the front end. Huh? Here are the micro front ends and I bundle it in the front end. You can use uh, iframe or web components for it. Uh, YouTube uses still iframe for uh, every micro front end. And uh, web components is also a technique. I've also uh, some talks on uh, YouTube about how, I, how you build micro front ends with uh, web components. Uh, I I'm focusing on uh, micro making micro front ends with the uh, Webpack module federation at this talk. So module federation, uh, what is it? Eh? It is uh, it loads uh, <coughs> your uh, modules. Modules are uh, uh, your micro frontends in a distributed way at uh, in, at runtime. It allows uh, sharing dependencies. So you have version conflict. When you have version conflicts, you can also handle that. I'll show you that. And uh, modules lazy loading. So. Uh, you only load a module, a micro front end, uh, when you need it in the front end. So you, uh, the bundle size is not too big in the beginning. Uh, how do we uh, create such an app? Uh, you, we have to define two roles with Web Module Federation. 
Uh, one role is uh, for the host or the container or the shell, we call it, the same name. And uh, in the host, we, uh, we define our remotes, that's our, our micro front ends. Those, those, those are, uh, that is nothing more than a URL. And these names uh, correspond to the uh, names in the micro front end. And the micro front itself exposes their own uh, components. So this uh, looks quite simple. It, it is also quite simple. And, uh, and also you can define, configure uh, your shared libraries, for example, a React. Uh, that's a very uh, common to use. And uh, you see that this is singleton, so where only one can be available. Required version is 18, and strict version is true, so you can get uh, errors in your logging when you have version conflicts. In this, this is no moment you have a version conflict because your micro front that has a shared library, also uh, a React library. There's another version. Now you have a version conflict. But when, because singleton is true, only version 18 is loaded. And that's quite good. So one, one version is loaded and used for both, for the host and for the micro front ends. There is one uh, rule here, uh, take the highest compatible version, so it works. So we have uh, this situation, this is the situation I've showed you already, 18 and uh, micro front end that's version 17, only load 18, because that is not, high, eh? it's not compatible, so we take the highest. Here you have compatibility uh, issues, so do we take the highest? When you have single to false, then uh, this, this situation can happen that both are loaded, so your bundle size can be very big, and that's not what you want. But perhaps sometimes you want it, because <laughs> you can have breaking changes uh, in your micro front end. But you can gradually can, you can step over eh, uh, later on to uh, the same uh, version of the uh, of the host. And the last one, eh, you only version 81 is loaded because that's the highest compatible version. I've created this application in the uh, in uh, React. Eh, this uh, the container at the top and uh, all those micro front ends as remotes and also some shared libraries. Uh, yeah, it can be everything. Uh, React is not, for example, can be low dash, can be uh, okay, <coughs> whatever you want to define as a chat library. Uh, Redux, for example, I uh, also use it for communicate for uh, yeah, for shared uh, <coughs> memory. How do you create such a component? Here are the steps. It's so uh, you have to generate the container, of course, with the, uh, we can do it with a very simple command. Uh, create micro frontend app and the micro frontend also with this command. Uh, you have to implement your components, that is uh, yeah, the, the part you have uh, to think about it. Uh, you have to change your configurations. Okay, step four, we have done it already, so I think you recognize it. And you have to implement your routing. So then, have you, then you have uh, yeah, the basic steps of how to start with uh, this micro front end with Webpack Module Federation. This is the uh, command. Uh, when you generate a container, you have, uh, okay, this, uh, you have to uh, generate a skeleton for the container, type of uh, application, part number, okay, and a lot of frameworks you can choose, that's very good. Also Svelte and a few. And also for uh, the micro front end, you can choose and if you also run, choose another port, not running on the same port as the host. And finally, you have uh, generated all these micro front ends, all those skeletons. And here you see a little example of how you implement a component. Here the outdoor events component, uh, the header you will loop here through outdoor events, which is uh, data which come from the from the backend, and we map through it, and we define your card, and we pass in your title, description, image, and we show here the image, and we have also a link here, the button there, the book event uh, link on the card, and we have to define this link also in the in the routing. We do that later. 
Uh, you have to change the configuration. You have uh, your recognizers also already. Yeah? Um, when you have defined your and uh, created your components. Uh, implement routing. Yeah? You see that you uh, yeah, we have to go from one uh, microphone to the other. Yeah? When you have uh, when you want to go to the detail page, you have to use this. Uh, um, yeah, say it uh, routing outdoor event slash slug. Slug can be a rhino or a tiger. Tiger event. You see an example of the ensemble app you can uh, grab. Okay. Um, multi framework can also uh, choose for a multi flame framework. Eh? You can also create this application with, uh, with Angular, for example, and React together. But then you have the, the little problem that you have uh, two uh, shared libraries you have to load. So, yeah, sometimes you have to do that. Multi framework, I show, yeah, you have a lot of bundle size, so uh, deal dealing with uh, legacy systems, you can do that. And also uh, migrating from, micro, from AngularJS to Angular, for example, you can also choose for a multi framework. But I should, uh, you know, after merging com companies, <coughs> let's see what some code. Here I'm running on uh, port uh, 3001. For uh, the layout here, uh, till of okay, here I'm running the outdoor events on port 3002, and here you have the container application running port 3000. And you see, okay, you can also check availability, and okay, uh, and it's not so not so not so special. But uh, I also want to implement later on a button here to uh, add a uh, something to the shopping cart here upstairs. The application, how does it look like uh, when you have to generate it? You can generate it with this command, of course, npx create microphone app. Uh, during generating, I can also show you something about the app. I have uh, here a layout module, skeleton is, is uh, generated. And we have here the webpack uh, config. And we de define here uh, two uh, components. I've, I've defined here the header and the footer. Now that's not so... Uh, <laughs> I can show it, of course. So, uh, the header and the footer. Okay, this is not uh, very exotic to, to show you, but okay. This is how we define it. Eh? You, do, you have to define your new uh, module federation plugin with the name uh, layout. And also ex exposes uh, these uh, components. And as a shared library React, also React library uh, DOM. Okay. And also we have, okay, you see that this my command is running here, you see? And you can uh, ask you for pick a name of your app. Okay, let's say uh, search, I've not created that already. Uh, project type. I don't, I don't know if you see it. Okay. Can you, can I, uh, okay. Project type is uh, application, API server, or a library I can choose. And I can choose the port number, 2006. And uh, what kind of framework? Huh? So, okay, let's say uh, React again. I want TypeScript. I want Tailwind for my uh, styling. And then it is uh, generating for me my skeleton. Okay. But you see that uh, okay, the, the skeleton is nothing more than uh, generating the web config, and you have to define your uh, by hand uh, your uh, your components. Here, are your layout component, a book event component has also a config. Here, yeah, I uh, also in the plugins I do a new module federation plugin, exposes my outdoor event component, and also a Shared part for React. Okay, this is uh, the detail page, which uh, shows your card with the price and the days how long it, uh, eh, the event takes. 
and some uh, information about the event. Okay. And also uh, the outdoor event itself. We have here. I showed you already the slide. Eh? We map you through the other events. And I have here a card. And also the card is here, uh, eh? is here defined. And I show here uh, the image on the card. Is it uh, still in the picture? Yeah. And nowadays I want to uh, yeah, add something to this, uh, to this code. I want to add the here, the counter. I want to add a uh, uh, something to my card. How do I do that? But um, I do that with a event. I show you later how that uh, works. But it's okay. There's, uh, here it is the styling of the button. Okay, on the click is. I want to increment, increment my uh, eh, my counter. This is what I want. So when I uh, push the button, it should increment. But okay, how do we do? How do we implement that? Add to cart. First, I have to define a function here. Const. Mm -hmm. Is it still in the picture there? Yeah. Okay, is it big enough? Uh -huh. Const event, and I want to communicate via events to uh, from one component to the other. How do we do that? I do that with a custom event. And I give uh, that event a name. Card. Okay, <coughs> and then I uh, do okay, doc document. Later on, I dispatch do a dispatch event. I want to dispatch event to another component. So, so I oh. Click it away now. Okay. You define a button, add to cart, and also a function increment with a name add to cart, and I dispatch, I send the defense, I want to try to communicate the defense to another component, to another micro front end. <coughs> so nowadays, when I uh, updated this, you see the button is there, or when I click on it, it's not not really working. How do I implement this? I can do that with uh, with, with some techniques how to communicate between micro front ends. You can do it with routing, which I've al already showed you. You can also use uh, local storage, which I don't use now, but I don't I use uh, events. Uh, when you use your local storage between micro to communicate between micro front ends, you can place some data in a local storage or async storage is for mobile. You can place it there, but uh, the micro front ends are not notified, so you uh, cannot subscribe on the data. But uh, when you have one micro front end on one page, eh, you can imagine, and you have another micro front end in another page, when during mounting the second page, you can read the local storage. So still you. You can communicate in that way. But we have also other techniques. I want to show you now with this, uh, what I'm typing. Uh, the custom event, you can also uh, communicate with events between micro frontends. And we can also use the pub sub pattern, pattern, where you uh, uh, place an, uh, a publisher, place an event on a topic, and a client can listen to it, subscribe to it. And you can also communicate via a uh, shared state. Uh, this, is, this is how I use, uh, uh, <laughs> how I implement my routing in, uh, in my application with my, uh, for my slug. So uh, this is the path, other event slug, so I can go from one microphone to the other. 
those also a type of communication. But when you want to implement the uh, add to cart event, you can uh, yeah, use this type of, uh, yeah, it's not, not so handy because you can do not go from one page to the other. So you can use local storage generally. Uh, you define uh, the get and the setter. In one microphone that you can uh, set an, uh, an item. Okay, you see the counter, so you sit here. And you're not in my front, front end, you can uh, use the getter. So with the custom event I want to use now in my code, you can uh, dispatch an event with the new custom event with the, yeah, with the name uh, add to cart. That's the name of the event. And in other mic front end, you, uh, you implement the event listener. You listen to add to cart event and uh, the, you count it up. In this situation, I could also use uh, the pub sub pattern, pattern, so which is uh, the same as a message bus. You can say, you publish the event, eh, the publisher publishes an event on the topic, and the clients can subscribe to it, listen to it, to the event. So, and it will uh, counter up, increment the counter. You can also use uh, communication with a shared state. Eh? Uh, we have a shared state. In this situation, uh, all those microphones are tied to, uh, tightly coupled together via the shared state. That is not really what we want. Because, uh, yeah, the rule is the microphone should be independently of each other. But, yeah, th you have to decide it uh, on your own. It depends eh? uh, when, uh, when your team uh, decides to, uh, to communicate in this way. It is a very, uh, the most easiest way to communicate between microphone ends. Uh, but okay, they are still a couple together. Do you want that? So that is uh, the question. And you can a global state, you can uh, implement that with Redux or uh, with uh, NGRX uh, for uh, Angular. Uh, you see uh, how you implement a shared state with Redux. Eh? And here you see the same uh, configuration I've showed you already, and also in the shared part. I define a, a React Redux with a version. But okay, I was uh, trying to implement uh, this uh, uh, this situation. Eh? I want to uh, increment uh, this, increment my counter in my shopping cart, and I want to communicate from one micro front end, the outer events micro front end. I want to communicate it to the layout micro front end. Uh, and I'm now changing the uh, header component. I do that with the add to cart event. Let's see, where, where is my code? <coughs> okay, what I did is on click, uh, increment, and then uh, new custom event. Okay, then I go to the header component within the layer layout <coughs> module. Where is it? Header, yes. Let's define a counter. Which one to show? I define first uh, state variable for uh, the counter is okay, state variable. This is uh, how you define a uh, <coughs> a component in a, in a React. Eh? It's nothing more than a function, simple function. I export it, it is, yeah, you make it public, so you can uh, reuse it. And in this head component, I uh, define here my, uh, yeah, my counter as state variable, which I want to increment, of course. And I use this hook, the use state hook, <coughs> which has an initial value of zero. And then I uh, define here, I use effect hook. I think I uh, missed a... Uh <laughs> you 
use effect hook, which is uh, here you can define your uh, side effects of your application. And uh, this, this brackets mean that this uh, hook is running only at uh, the first render of your component. First time it will uh, render something. This use effect hook is red, I don't know why, okay, uh, later on let's see. It's listening to, uh, the, uh, to the event, of course, at event listener. At two card, and that was the name of it. <coughs> and I want to handle that event, handle. Yeah. Event. Let's define that uh, function. When you uh, receive that uh, event at the card, you run the handle event function. And I set here the counter uh, to uh, plus one, of course. So, uh, count, yeah. Count plus one. Okay. Let's also uh, here put this at the end. And I also, uh, okay, this is all it does, of course. And I also. You have also a uh, cleanup function in the use effect hook. So during unmounting of the header component, it will uh, remove the event listener. So I can use this. Copy paste. Remove. Okay. And I make here a mistake. If okay, let's see. Does somebody see it? <laughs> One typo. What was it? Uh -huh. oh, okay. This uh, sounds better. Huh? Yeah. Now it should work. At the card, you see that I communicate from one microphone to the other with the custom event. So uh, at the end, I, we have also uh, the API gateway and uh, backend for frontend. That is an architectural uh, talk about how to communicate within uh, in a micro frontend app. Uh, what is the API gateway? It's nothing more than uh, uh, yeah. It's uh, it stands here in the middle uh, of the frontend and the backend and is responsible for. Uh, also for authenticating and authorization and for also for routing a request from the front end to the back end and also for from aggregating results from the back end to the front end. Uh, it's also uh, responsible for uh, <coughs> the caching, for example. Uh, I have a lot of more things. Okay. And we have also a the BFF is the backend for frontend that is part of the uh, API gateway and which is nothing more than creating uh, beautiful uh, APIs, backend APIs for the frontend, you can say. But nowadays you have also uh, GraphQL, uh, which is also uh, uh, an, uh, an example of backend for frontend and which, uh, yeah, with, with uh, GraphQL you know it already. You can, uh, the client can ask precisely which data they want from the backend. So we can uh, set up a communication like this way. Uh, team A want to communicate with team C with, uh, with events, for example, I showed you already. And team C can, via uh, uh, GraphQL, communicate with uh, the backend of E, for example. So you can communicate in this way. How do, do I survive my rhino? Who do you think that this uh, A, make yourself big, B, run away zigzag? Nobody? I've done it really, okay. <laughs> A tiger comes by? Nobody knows, okay. 
There comes a tiger by, but it was later, yeah, you know it. You've heard the story already, okay. Or it was later after that, it was, aha, uh -huh. okay, it was another. <laughs> or my friend took a photo. Everybody thinks that? I don't know. Nobody? <laughs> Here my friend was, uh, was sitting in the tree, and he has, has a very old camera with him. And that old camera made such a loud noise that the, the rhino feels himself so very uh, yeah, tiny. And uh, yeah, he wants to survive, of course. He runs away. He feels himself so, uh, so, so tiny, independent. He wants to run away. Here, I survived my monolith. Here, he went away. So, this was my talk. Are there questions? Yes? Uh, if you had to start a new project right now, would you directly start with micro front end approach or you would start, uh, wait until your project is, let's say, big enough to start decoupling it into different modules? Yeah, it depends. Uh, it depends. Uh, not, yeah, you can start with it, but it is not recommended because it is not so easy to set up. Yeah, I show you an easy way, of course. But uh, yeah, when you have to want to start up, it's also. Uh, Depends also how big is uh, how many teams are working on it. Are you are working with three teams on it. You have to think about it. Two teams, no, I should not do that. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you can st uh, like when you when you was want to start. I should start with uh, not in a monolithic way, but you can start in a monolithic way and then define parts as as uh, uh, modules as as soon as possible and split your application very well up. Eh? Still, this can be a monolith, but yes. you, have to, yeah, you have to gradually uh, upgrade it. You can also uh, say, uh, you can also start with a, mic with a monolith and also uh, uh, make a little part, uh, uh, make a little part, a microfronted of it, and go further with, uh, with the uh, monolith and communicate via events with each other. So you can gradually upgrade. I should not start with microphone then, because this is not so easy, and uh, monolith is also not me not easy. It is, uh, yeah. But finally, uh, yeah, you have a lot of uh, advantages uh, of it. Yeah. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for your call. For your. Thank uh, you. Or a talk. Uh, if you have to send something more complex than a simple event, because in your example it's just a, a string like add to cart, but if you have to manipulate more complex objects or structures, how do you do that and where would you define the structure? Because if you are in multi environment or different technologies, I suppose you would send JSON, but where do you define the, the structure of it? Wait, so I don't understand really the question, but uh, it is about how it di uh, more complex uh, f structures. Yes, sending data. Any data with, with the event. Okay, yeah, the, yeah, you can also uh, you can send uh, which event you want. You can also uh, send uh, a lot of JSONs, uh, big JSON to one front end to the mic front, to one mic front to the other. That's not a problem. No, it's not really. No, it's not a problem. Is that your answer? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi, thanks for your talk. Yeah, um, <coughs> I was wondering if this technology was mature enough um, and how does it behave with um, progressive web apps and uh, such things like uh, offline usage uh, mm -hmm. as you are communicating to, um, through HTTP to get your components or your pages. Uh, is it still possible to make something offline and with uh, micro front ends? Yeah, of course, if, uh, I've showed you. Let's go further. Yeah, if, if we build it. Uh, this this yeah. part you see here, the local here, you see a service worker. You recognize it. Yeah, okay. This is what you, uh, this, uh, that you use with uh, progressive web apps. Yeah, you can use it. And so, yeah, okay, in this way, you can use it also, but also without a global state. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And this is why you uh, were triggered, I think, about this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.